spam. Today we're taking a deep dive into this canned meat. And with this beautiful assortment of ingredients in front of me, we're gonna see if recreating it is possible. To take it to the next level, we're also gonna try something that may or may not be illegal. We're gonna attempt to make Wagyu A5 Spam. Could this be the biggest mistake of my life? Let's find out. First things first, what on earth is Spam? Let's crack open a tin of this stuff and find out. I've had Spam a few times and never necessarily loved it, but people seem to have an absolutely crazy obsession about it. So apparently you can eat this stuff right out of the can, so we're gonna try it. It's actually not bad. Now there are tons of varieties of this stuff. I wanna find out which one I like best. All right, well, I'm gonna be honest here. I had no idea there were this many types of Spam. This is just ridiculous. Spam. I'm gonna start tasting them. Spam, 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 meat sweats. Spam, 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 spam. spam. Well, now that I've officially had my sodium intake for the week, my favorite was actually the hickory smoked spam. You what? Now, usually I'm not a hickory kind of guy, but something about that smoke flavor was very good. And if they did use applewood, I'm sure it'd be 10 times better. But either way, I am admittedly pretty undereducated on spam itself. So let's talk to some people that know everything about spam. All right, let's talk to spam. Terry and I are both spam ambassadors. You have a great name. So we'll call you Spamax. Spamax. I love it. Spamax. Let's get started. Welcome to Austin, Minnesota. A luncheon meat that they eventually became Spam was created in 1927, and they called it spiced ham. I mentioned that Spam became popular during World War II, and they were looking for supplies to give to the soldiers, and where they were looking for a high-protein meal. The government purchased 100 million pounds of Spam, so they were eating it two and three times a day. And they developed this love-hate relationship for it. I guess it was better than eating bugs. Six ingredients, it's pork with ham, then it's sugar, salt, water, uh, sodium nitrite, just to turn the meat pink. Two thirds of all Spam consumed is in Asia Pacific. They sell over 70,000 cans of musubi a week in Hawaii. I see you have the hickory smoked. Have you ever had mm -hmm. an applewood smoke one? Okay, so here Ooh. you go. Yep, you can you can always submit what wow. your next flavor should be. I'm I'm trying that for sure. I might make a video on it. Yeah. Have a spamtastic weekend. All right, well that was absolutely spamtastic. But either way, I think it's finally time for us to make our own spam. But here's a question: How in God's name do you make spam? So anytime I don't know how to make something, you go on the internet, you type in Joshua Weissman, then you type in whatever it is you want to make. So if you haven't checked out his video on spam, I highly recommend you do. Okay, and number one, we'll need some prosciutto. We'll also need some beautiful smoked ham. We'll need some pork shoulder, AKA the Boston butt. For our traditional spam, this is pretty much all we'll need. And for the super, super premium, premium spam, spam, you have some Iberico pork. This stuff is incredible. And of course, the Wacky A5. Okay, now here's the deal. If I were to eat all of these beautiful ingredients on a regular basis, your boy wouldn't be around here too much longer. That's why I am very excited to share that the sponsor of today's video is Cook Unity. As much as I love cooking, I'll be honest, I end up spending way too much on delivery every week. But for the past month, I've been using Cook Unity and it's been life changing. It's the first chef to consumer platform delivering freshly prepared food to your door. It's super easy to select your meals and the options are endless with over over seven dietary preferences. There are even vegan options, but I'll be honest, I've yet to try those. My favorite so far has been the barbecue heritage pork chop by chef John Delucci, but lately I've been choosing mainly chicken and seafood dishes for convenient high protein post-workout meals. These are legit handcrafted chef-made meals made with real healthy ingredients. The best part is they're pre-cooked, so no more cleanup and meal planning. Today I'm having the Japanese style loco moco meatloaf by chef Maiko Kaigoku made in Brooklyn, New York. I mean, just look at the egg on this. It's perfect. Each meal is made by chefs who specialize in different cuisines, so I get to experience foods that I would never make myself. It's a super flexible meal service too. You can try something new for every meal, skip weeks, and cancel whenever you want. Go to cookunity.com slash maxthemeatguy or click the link in the description and use my code maxthemeatguy50 to get 50% off your first order of Cook Unity meals to try them out for yourself. And let's get back to the video. Okay, so starting here with our giant leg of prosciutto. Now I've actually I actually never cooked with one or sliced one up. And believe it or not, they sell these in Costco. I think we got this for like 130 bucks. And this thing has been aged for over 400 days. I mean, this thing would be a great baseball bat. 
Thing's big. So this thing has been cured, but kind of a similar process as dry aging. And as you can see, it does have like a tough outer pellicle. And they gave me this cool little knife to go with it. And we'll need about a sixth of a pound per loaf. But we're gonna try to take some nice thin slices. I have a feeling this is gonna be all fat here. It slides through like butter. It does have this interesting pink situation going on. I think that's from the curing salt, but let's keep going. I think we're finally getting into some meat here. Wow, this actually looks amazing. Really great marbling kind of running throughout it. It has that nice pink color from the cure. Now that we've gotten past the fat, I'm gonna see if I can just shave off a nice thin piece of prosciutto. That thing is paper thin. Okay, time to go for a little taste of our Costco prosciutto. Tastes just like prosciutto. Now, because we are grinding this up, there's no need to go super thin with it. So I'm gonna take one last piece. And now we're just gonna trim this up remove some of the fat and also that exterior pellicle that was formed as it was drying out. It's interesting how similar the pellicle is to dry aged steaks, even though prosciutto is aged way longer and this looks just about good to go. And next up we have our regular smoked ham. Now my sister actually bought the really fancy stuff, so I'm kind of excited about it, but let's slice it up. And for this one, I got the machete and just gonna slice this into strips. And next up, we'll need some pork shoulder. I am gonna do some trimming because there is quite a bit of the fat cap left on this. Now there is a bone on here, so we're just gonna trim around it and just take some slices. Now for this recipe, we'll also be needing some straight up pork fat because we're healthy. Okay, so we've reached a point where we have all of the meat for our traditional spam recipe, but for the next one, we're gonna swap out some of these for some extremely premium ingredients and make our Wacky Way 5 Spam. And it is time to grind our meat and we're gonna start with the traditional Spam. And we're gonna start here with the pork shoulder. We want our meat as cold as possible, so I did throw it in the freezer for about 30 minutes. And it's really just a matter of sticking the meat in the top of the grinder and pressing down to force it through. And now we're gonna move on to the ham. It, it, it actually looks like live magic. Oh God. Next, the prosciutto. And finally, the straight up fat. And now we're just gonna run it through one more time so it's extra fine. We are left with our beautiful ground meat. Sort of looks like that pink McDonald's chicken nugget meat. But either way, the next step is to quickly emulsify it with our hands. I wanna take a bite. Next, no. Next up, we'll need to make our seasoning mix. We have some nutritional yeast, salt, sugar, potato starch, some cornstarch, some ground bay leaves. And this here is pink curing salt. Gives it that nice red color and also that cured taste. And finally, some water. And we're just gonna get this all mixed up and completely cover the meat. And once again, we're gonna mix this up. And it is all mixed up. The craziest thing is, this literally smells like Spam. Let's move on to our Wagyu A5 Spam. This right here is an Iberico Pluma steak. Iberico pigs are essentially the Wagyu of pork. As you can see, phenomenal marbling on these. These pigs are treated incredibly well and it really comes through with the flavor. Now these are one of the greatest cuts of pork and honestly, it hurts to slice these up. Okay guys, this is where things start to get very real. What we have here is a Wagyu A5 BMS 12 New York strip. This thing's like a little baby and we're about to hack it up. As you can see, the marbling on this steak is absolutely insane. Within the A5 category, having a BMS score of 12 is literally the highest it can possibly be. And the fat content on this must be well over 60%. Those grains of fat are just absolutely beautiful. And we're left with all of our ingredients for the Wagyu A5 Spam. What I did is reduce the amount of fat, some of these other proportions, so I think we're at a similar fat ratio, a similar salt level with that ham. And for the second time today, we are going to be grinding our meat. Bruh. Starting with our beautiful Iberico pork, and next up, the ham. Our prosciutto, the fat, Okay, and now it is finally time. We're gonna grind up our Wagyu A5. <laughs> With our first grind complete, time to put it through one more time. So the meat this time was a lot colder and it made the second grind go so much faster. So definitely make sure you're starting with very cold meat. And we have that exact same combination of spices and salts. Let's mix it up. Got so caught up in the mixing that I forgot there's a whole wacky steak in here. I feel like I just committed a felony. To cook these, we're gonna be using the sous vide method and we'll need two loaf pans. 
Starting with the regular spam. Now the goal here is to just pat it down and really make sure there's no air pockets. And next up, the Wagyu A5 spam. So again, just patting it in nicely. And we have our two lows of spam. One costs about 10 to 20 times more than the other, but either way, let's get them into vacuum bags and sous vide. As you can see, we have a great seal, and especially this part here, it's just completely sealed to the edges. Two loaves of Spam, let's sous vide them. And this right here is our sous vide bath. It's set to 175, and they go. And we're gonna let these cook for two to three hours. Okay, and it has been just about two and a half hours. I think Tibby is ready for the Spam, but let's remove them. Now that they're fully cooked, we need to compress them. So all we're doing here is literally just stacking them, adding another sheet tray on top. Got something heavy, press that down. And we're gonna throw this in the fridge overnight to set. Well, it has been 24 hours, which means in theory, our spam is ready to go. Slice into it. Now, the first thing I noticed is that they're completely pink and they actually look like spam. As you can see, the Wagyu one right here has so much more fat that rendered out of it compared to the traditional spam one. I mean, in here, there's just an absurd amount of fat, but it sort of makes sense due to the higher fat content in the beef. Let's start by slicing open the traditional Spam. Spam. Just gonna use this little guy right here to separate it from the corners. And time to see if it actually comes out. Damn it. Come on, Spam. I'm burping a baby. Oh, we have... Spam. Besides the fat, there's almost like this gelatin that came out as well. And next up, our Wagyu A5 Spam. And there's just so much fat. And once again, we're just gonna separate the sides to hopefully let it come out easily. Here we go. This one's even harder than the first one. Oh wow, tons and tons of that uh, gelatin and fat, but we'll just wipe it down and see how it looks. I think this is all like really high quality fat too. Okay, and over here we have our Wagyu A5 Spam. The first thing I noticed is the Wagyu one got a lot smaller as that fat kind of rendered out. It's also a little bit darker in color, but there is one thing both my sister and I realized. They smell exactly like a McDonald's breakfast. And we'll start with some slices of the regular Spam. Very excited to see how this looks on the inside. Yeah, there's our Spam. Kind of looks like Spam. Maybe a little bit more texture than normal, but this right here is our Spam. It feels pretty similar. And next up we have the Wagyu A5 Spam. Pretty similar on the inside. I have to say I am very happy with these results, but of course what matters most is the taste and whether I can tell a difference between the two. Actual Spam, Ow. my Spam, and the Wagyu A5 Spam. All I want to do here is get them crisped up, and the homemade ones seem to be browning pretty nicely. And of course, got to make some musubi, and with the rice, press it down. First time making musubi, people, so bear with me. And with the Wagyu A5 Spam, extra push down, and wrap it up. And just like that, after two days of work, all the Spam was complete, and it was time to find out which one tasted best. Well, the time is here. Can I tell the difference between our three types of Spam? Of course, we got the taste tester tie. Different color today. Let's do this. Spam number one. 99% sure that's one of mine. Tasted pretty good, honestly a little dry. Okay, Spam number two. That is Spam, for sure. I will say the salt content and overall flavor profile is very similar. Spam number three. Okay, so it's very clear to me that one and three are mine. I think I prefer three, then two, then one. Three was the Wagyu. Let's go. Thank God I prefer the Wagyu one because that one is significantly more expensive. Is it worth grinding up an entire beautiful Wagyu A5 strip? Realistically, not. However, I did prefer it the best. But either way, I hope you guys learned something about Spam today. If you're still watching at this time, please make sure you're subscribed, like the video, and I'll see you next time.